وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to Ask Huda. I'm your host today, Jamil Rashid. And today I have a very special guest, two very special guests. The first I'd like to welcome, Sheikh Mohammed Salah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair. And the second I have with me, Sheikh Yusuf Estes, all the way from the United States of America. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam. I have to correct you. I'm from Texas. Isn't that America? Not anymore. Okay, Jazakallah khair. <laughs> Okay, as you see, uh, we're going to have a, a lively Ask Huda today. Please don't forget our telephone numbers. The country code is 202, then it's 3855548 or 249. Of course, you can send emails at ask, ask at huda TV. Sheikh uh, Yusuf, I'd like to start with you today. I've got a question from Brother Muhammad from Sudan. Okay. Now he says... From where? From Sudan. Sudan? I like Sudan. MashaAllah. It used it to be part of Egypt. That's true. It, it, this would uh, be like one huge... Well, go ahead. What's the question? <laughs> What's okay, his name? You, you can't keep stopping me like this. I'm going to laugh all the way through. Okay. Uh, his question is regarding some questions from some of his non-Muslim colleagues. Okay. Um, they've asked him about Islam, saying that, isn't it a religion of peace? He says, yes, it is. Then they say, what about this incident of Bani Kureza, where over 600 Jews were Bani killed? Bani Kureza? Yes. At the time of Medina. Bani Kureza, and yeah. over 600 Jews were killed. He wants to know if Islam is a religion of peace. Uh, why were these killings allowed? Well, first of all, we thank him for the question because, he, you know, he did the right thing by coming to the source. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we would discover immediately from this is that we don't say that Islam means peace. Mm -hmm. We say that Islam is the submission to God and it's the obedience to his commandments and then being at peace with whatever is a result of that. So, uh, the peace is between us and God after we've submitted to Him. Mm -hmm. Now, if Allah has ordered us to do something, then we must do whatever it is He's ordered us to do. The second part of the question, though, uh, implies that there is some kind of a, a religious prejudice going on. Mm -hmm. Because when you say Jews, right away, and especially in today's world, you're going to have people thinking, Jews, killed Jews, oh my God, we're going to start talking about Holocaust, we're going to talk about Hitler, we're going to talk about Germany, World War II, and blah, blah, blah. But in fact, I will tell you that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, and his followers had absolutely no regard about religion as much as they did people themselves. And there was never such a thing as being prejudiced against the Jews in Islam. And if any of the Muslims today are suffering from that, they need to do what we call a mental enema and get rid of some of this filth because this is very wrong to have that kind of a position. The position of the Muslim is that we hate evil. We don't have to hate people, but we hate the evil that some people do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if a group of people do X or Y or Z, we don't necessarily attribute that to their religious background. We attribute it to the person. Now, if they do good and it's in their religion to do good, that makes sense. But when you find people acting contrary to what their religion teaches, then that's not representation of their religion, Right. So we wouldn't like it if people tell us today, well, you Muslims are all in a violent religion. Because mm -hmm. we know that although some Muslims do mm -hmm. violence, it doesn't represent Islam. Likewise, we wouldn't like it if you said that all these Jews at the time of Muhammad were violent people. Right? Mm -hmm. It turns out that the people that you're referring to weren't Jews necessarily, but what they were is people who were guilty of a very serious crime, regardless of their religious ethnicity. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So what Islam is ordering to be punished is the guilty people. These people were guilty of some very heinous crimes. And our Sheikh can give us the details on that. But the point is here, these people were guilty people, and it had nothing to do with the fact whether they were Jew, 
Christian atheists or even Muslims, anyone who had done the crimes they committed would still have found themselves in the same predicament. Jazakallah khair. Before I go to Sheikh Mohammed, I've just got a call from Sister Um Umar from the United States of America. Sister, you're live on Ask. Could your question, please? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair. I'd like to say jazakallah khair to all of you for providing uh, this very needed um, uh, show. Um, my question is such that I wanted to know that uh, Islamically, um, we all know what are the uh, roles and responsibilities of the, uh, you know, the son towards his parents. What I would like to know is in Islam, what does Islam say about, for instance, uh, as a wife, what is my uh, responsibility to my parents after marriage, uh, you know, um, in terms of uh, should I buy them gifts or spend money on them, etc., uh, and my in-laws. And likewise, for my husband, what is his responsibility in Islam uh, towards his in-laws? Uh, Sister um, Umar there from the United States of America. Okay, Sheikh, uh, the history b- behind this event, some information, please. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyihi wa mustafa Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la thumma amma ba'd. Exactly as the Sheikh, as the Sheikh mentioned, that religion is a source of peace. It provides uh, the religious person, the one who has religious commitment, uh, peace, peace between him and his creator, peace between him and every living creature, between him and himself, within himself. It brings peace to his inner self. Uh, this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even dealing with those who are not uh, following your own religion. Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقسطوا إليهم Allah does not forbid you from being kind, gentle and nice to those who did not fight against you nor did they kick you out of your homes based or on the account of your religion <laughs> so if they are peaceful to you you must be peaceful to them as a matter of fact Allah wants you to deal with them justly and to be kind to them in another verse we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says even your relationship to your enemies if they decide to adopt peace وَإِنْ جَنَحُوا لِسَّلْمِ فَجْنَحْ لَهَا وَتَوَكَّلْ Allah. If they want peace, then you should submit to that. You should agree to that. So this is the very first fact. Second, Jamil, if I happen to tell you that, did you know uh, so-and-so, he was executed. He says, sorry, why? Mm-hmm. What happened? First you ask about the reason. Mm-hmm. Before saying that uh, that's not justified, this is wrong, you have to know why was he uh, crucified? Why was he executed? Maybe because he was a drug dealer. Because he murdered somebody else, mm-hmm. and so on, al qasas. So let's know about the historical fact behind the incident of Bani Qurayza. Once the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam arrived to Al Madina, mm-hmm. amongst the very first uh, missions, he took upon himself to establish peace, to establish peace with the residents of Al Madina, with the Jews. There were uh, three major tribes: Banu Qaniqa, Banu Nadir, and Banu Qurayza. Among us, the articles of the treaty which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam have agreed to it with them is to defend al Medina against <laughs> anyone who would attack or try to invade al Medina, whether against the Jews or against Muslims. Mm-hmm. So what happened? They did not fulfill this commitment. And they did not really maintain this agreement and covenant. And this is their nature. So what happened to them? Uh, on the fifth year and two years after the Battle of Ahad, the Meccans gathered a huge army that the peninsula have never ever seen anything like that before. Of 10,000 warriors, of all the Arabic tribes, the Bedouins, and their allies of the Jews financed that as well. Mm-hmm. To attack al Medina and invade it. And the Prophet ﷺ did not know what to do. And it was Salman al-Farisi who mm-hmm. suggested that to dig the trench. Exactly. That is the battle of the ditch or the trench. And it was all recorded in the Quran under the chapter of Al-Ahzab or the Confederates because the army was made of Confederates or parties. Well, it was now the turn of the Jews according to the articles of the treaty to support Muslims. And Nabi mm-hmm. did not ask them any of that. Rather, he just wanted them to stay on a site, not to intervene. And while the Muslims army was facing the enemies right in front of the trench, the front yard, and they were trying to invade al Medina, 10,000 of them, there was a person by the name Huyay ibn Akhtab, who was the chief of the Jews of Bani al Nadir, went to uh, his correspondent of Ka'b ibn Asad, the chief of Bani Qurayza, this particular tribe, which was also uh, in a covenant with the Prophet ﷺ in a peace treaty. 
He tried to convince him, this is it man, they got him. This is it. Muhammad is over. Muslims are no more existing. This is it. We have to have the confederates and the Meccans to take him out. So he managed to convince him. So he decided to break his covenant with Muslims. When and where? Right on the spot, while Muslims were on the front yard <coughs> facing the enemies, leaving behind in Al-Madinah, only women and children, innocent people. So what did they do? They sent some of them to spy, so that they would attack women hmm. in their fortress. Women and children. And when they did that, there was a, a woman by the name Sophia. Sophia by the name is the Prophet's aunt. May Allah be pleased with her. She's the mother of Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas. She saw one of them was spying and he was trying to collect some news. She ran down and she hit him with an iron rod. And she killed him right on the spot. <laughs> and when the Jews saw that what happened to uh, their friend, they realized that Muhammad was very smart and he left behind a whole army to protect al Medina from inside. So initially, they planned to sandwich the Muslims. Banu Qurayza and their warriors from inside and the confederates from outside. Not only that. They supplied the confederates with the supply with whatever they needed of food or water supplies. And this is when the Muslims confiscated 20 camels were loaded with food supply which was going to the enemy. To the enemies. When and where? Right on the battlefield. That was a very critical moment, the most critical moment in the life of Muslims at all. What happened is, once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defeated the confederates and all of that was recorded in details fi Surah Al-Ahzab, through his will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a, 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 a hurricane, severe one, that blew their tents away and their vessels, so they decided to back off and go back. All of a sudden, without bloodshed, without anything. And who's left behind? Now Banu Quraidha to face their fate. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is a very important lesson that every Muslim must pay attention to. And those people of today, today's leaders of the modern world, who take preemptive strikes against innocent people, and can millions, they need to listen to what the Prophet ﷺ did before accusing Islam and Muslims and pointing fingers to Islam and Muslims as not peaceful people. And Nabi ﷺ sent three very trustworthy companions to investigate the case and to see if these guys really broke the treaty and violated the covenant, or it was a rumor. And this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. In mm-hmm. Before responding, you have to 